Hey, Mike with Mike's Bags, and today I am reviewing the Razorback by HL Board Co. Let's go ahead and dive in, and we will break this bag down. Let's start with materials. Slow side of this Razorback is the same materials you find on the fast side of the BG Viking, Reynolds Pro Advantage. Seven speed material, it's very soft, it's fast, but somewhat controllable. It, 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 the one weakness, the one negative this material I'd say is humidity. When boards start getting damp and sticky from humidity, this material just wants to absorb that moisture and it starts to get to a point where it doesn't slide, hard to push. But on dry boards, you know, slow, normal, fast speeds, it plays great. Uh, so it's seven speed on the slow side, fast side. This fast side material is the same material you find on the fast side of the BG Witcher, the B3 Ranger, Coyote, Fatal, the Cornhole Coastal Creature. Very similar to the fast side of the Pro Sniper, Viper, Deadhead, but not quite the same. Plays, it plays a lot like it, though. It's a little softer feeling material. It's a 9-speed, crazy fast. It's great for pushing through blockers, cleaning up congestion on the board. Slides on the board in any conditions. So we're looking at a 7-9-speed bag. This is, a, this is a bag designed for speed. It's a fast, faster bag. If you love speed, this is what you're looking for here. Template-wise, I'm going to call it a medium template, but it's a looser, floppier bag, so it feels like a larger template bag. Right? There's a lot of flop in this bag, and if you watch my videos, you know I love a floppy bag for my fast bag, so this is, I love the flop in this bag for a faster bag like this. The fill in here is a mixed fill. It, it's got some flat fill. It's got some beads in here. I actually love the fill as well, and I'll get more into that why when I get into playability here, but mixed fill, medium template. The bag is ACO stamped, so if you play in the ACO, especially now, starting season 19, you're required to have an ACO stamp bag, so this is a great option for you. So that leads me into playability here, and this is a bag that's really designed to just run bags in the hole. You know, you're putting your four bags in, you're trying to outscore your opponent. If your opponent's throwing blockers, you're pushing through them, you're airmailing over them, you're keeping the board clean. That's kind of what it's designed for. It's really, it's just made run bags in hole for hole. You can take the slow side, you can control it, you can throw a blocker up there occasionally here and there. The problem is it's it's not that sticky, it's, it's not, it doesn't offer a lot of resistance, it's very easy to push through. So if your opponent, as long as your opponent's comfortable pushing, it's not going to cause bags to kick off like a stickier material would. Very, again, very easy to push through, not the best of blockers out there. But you know, like occasionally if you want to throw a blocker up here or there, maybe, maybe you're running hole for hole, hole for hole, and you get to a round, you know what, I want to put a blocker up. I need to put a blocker. I need to, I need a manufacturing point something. You can do that with the material if you need to. Just it's not it, it's not the best. Like this isn't this bag is not designed to throw blockers. This bag's not designed to play a dirty style game. This bag's designed to run bags in the hole. The the flop on this bag makes the bag very forgiving. So it, you know I talk about landing zones and you know the the larger floppier bags have those wider landing zones and this is no exception. If you watch these videos that I'm throwing, you'll see I was pretty inconsistent with my landing. I was landing. Left, right, short, long, whatever. But even though I wasn't hitting my target every more spot, landing spot every time, the bag was still grabbing the hole going in. And, and it just builds your confidence. Talk about corn being a confidence sport. And, and the more bags you put in the hole, the more likely it is your next bag's going in the hole. And a bag like this really helps build that confidence. Because as long as you can get this corner to grab the hole, just grab it. It's going to spin around and melt right back in. The bag does wonderful around the hole. If, if you get it to grab, it's probably going in because of this feel. This mixed feel. I love the way the mixed feel plays around the hole, the way it feels. It, it, it gives the bag just that bag just wants to drip in the hole. So if I get a bag up there with enough speed, it's going in. If I leave a bag hanging by some chance, it's I don't have to do anything crazy. My next bag in likely is going to take it in. I didn't have to go after bag two bags too much unless I had them kind of on the back corner around that back edge. And even then, if it's on my side, I could step out and just come and clip it, take it in. If it's on the other side of the board, I, I yeah, there's enough movement in this fill, enough enough balance that I could get a little bit of a slight cut. I couldn't get a hard cut. But I get a little bit of a slight cut, so I could kind of throw across here and just get a little bit of a, of a clip of it and cut it and pull it right back in. The bags are very collectible. If you do leave one short, leave one hanging, you can definitely get them in, as long as it wasn't your last bag. I think the only times I left a bag hanging was on my fourth bag or if I just completely missed a hole and I, it was just out of play. I wasn't going to get it. But I, I love the way I love the way that it plays around the hole. It's very forgiving. It's just it's just gonna find if you get it near the hole, it's gonna go in the hole. The other thing I didn't mention is the bag is very forgiving in the landing. So if you if you don't throw the flash of bags, it's not gonna punish you. It's not gonna kick a ton. Even though it has a bead fill, it has a little bit of balance. I, I, I hesitate to say balance. It really doesn't have much balance on the bag. It lands very soft. It almost just lands, flattens out, and runs more like a flat fill bag would. But there is some movement, some balance, which allows you to have a little bit of cut, a little bit of shot shaping. You're not going to make crazy harsh cuts around bags, but if your opponent throws a blocker, you can step out, throw a little bit of a cut, and just kind of sneak around. And again, if you just grab that hole, it's going to spin around and just and just come right back in there. So you can you can make some subtle cuts. It's not a bag that you're flopping and rolling again. If you throw roll bags, you roll anything. But for the average roll bag player to below average, this is not a bag you roll. It's just too much flop. It, it just doesn't have enough 
enough volume to make it very easy to roll. This is a difficult bag. This takes a skilled roll bag player to roll a bag like this. And really, that's not what this bag designed for. Again, it's designed to run bags in the hole. For me, if, if I, the, when I would pull this bag out, one is I'm playing in slow board conditions. As long as they're not humid, just they're just slow boards. This is a great bag because I, I can play this like more of a control game, more of a middle speed bag and still be able to slide up. If I'm playing as an opponent who plays a dirty style game, and my opponent pulls out these carpet bags, I've watched them play. I know they're a rollback thrower. I know they throw cuts. I know they love putting blockers up there and causing congestion and then just going over it, going around it. This is a bag I pull out, especially if they're better at it than I am. If they play a better dirty style game than I do, I don't want to match them at their strength. So I want to pull a bag like this out where I can just push their blockers and just keep the boards clean. They throw a blocker, I'm pushing through it and taking my bag and leaving the board clean, taking away their rolls, taking away their cuts, taking away the strength of their game and making them try to go hole for hole with me. And then on their fourth bag, when they throw a blocker up there, maybe I step out, bully it out of the way and go in and then make them work to try to collect it. I'll definitely do that. But I, I, this is a bag like I, said, I want to pull out when I'm playing an opponent that wants to play a dirty style game, I would do this. It, it, you know, it, if you're a bag, if you're a um, if you're a viper thrower, like say you play in the ACL, you throw vipers and you're going to the ACO and you're looking for something. This is a very comparable bag to viper. It has a lot of similar characteristics to it. The, the fast time material is a little different. The fill is a touch different, but the flop in here, the speeds, it all it has a very similar feel to it. In fact, I like this better because I don't like those dots that the Ultra uses on the viper. I don't like the way they feel. This doesn't have the dots. But it's a very similar speed, very similar controllable bag. So if you throw something like a Viper in the ACL, you're looking for an ACO bag. This is this is definitely something you'll look at. If you just play ACO and you like you're looking for a fast bag to throw, I love the way this Razorback plays. It's it's, it's a phenomenal bag for just putting bags in the hole. You know, if you want to play deck arounds, Ghost Holios, this is a wonderful bag. You're gonna put a lot of bags in the hole with it. You're gonna keep your score high. This is a, definitely a PPR Razor type bag. It's not a DPR type bag. So all in all. Love the way the bag plays. Put a lot of bags in the hole with it. Had phenomenal time playing. If you've thrown the razor back, I always love to hear your guys' opinions. So let me know what you like, what you don't like. I'm always I'm always looking for your guys' opinion on these bags. Leads me to availability. HL Boardco has a Facebook page. I'll put a link down in the description. That's where you send them a message through Facebook. Um, you can probably email them as well and let them know what bags you're looking for. They do a lot of drops and releases on their Facebook page. So if you want to follow them, like their page, you can you can stay up to date on the. Um, the releases, what's coming out, what's new, what designs, and all that stuff. I think there's also a fan group page as well. I'll tell you, look, I think there is a Facebook page. If there is, I'll put a link to it as well for that. You can jump in and join that group as well as get up to keep up to date on there. But the bags are like 75 to 80. I think these are $75, and that includes shipping. Their, their price is like $75, $75 or $80 shipped to you, which is a phenomenal price. It's one of the cheaper price bags when you when you factor in the shipping on there. It's a high quality bag. I love the way the bag plays. I, I, I have no complaints, no issues, no gripes about the price of it. I mean, that's just a wonderful price. So if you're looking for an ACO stamp bag and you like faster bags, definitely give this Razor back a, a try. I can't recommend it enough to you guys. I really love the way it played out there. So I thank you guys so much for support. And I thank you for watching.